Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. Grab your vices, chill out, and let's get straight to it. This is episode 21 of Straightforward with Miss B, alongside my guest co-host, A.G. What's up, A.G.? Hey, man, how you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. You sound bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm ready to get some work done. Oh, okay. Shit today. okay. Well, I am so glad that you are ready um, to talk shit today. Um, before we get into the story, um, good stories for today. And we, you know, I promised myself that I wouldn't make this t- be a, you know, sad, somber episode like the last, you know, past two episodes that we've had of the podcast, you know, talking about the mass shootings. I wanted to definitely try to keep this one a little bit, you know, definitely upbeat and, you know, lighthearted for the people, you know. Sometimes talking about deaths and shootings and everything, it just becomes a, you know, becomes a bit much. Um, but how was your weekend? Um, Kind of foggy. Got a lot of drinking and smoking done. Okay. <laughs> so I barely can remember anything, but. Mm-hmm. Everything ended up okay. I made it home. Okay, and what was happening this weekend to make you do a lot of smoking and drinking? Uh, my cousin got married. Oh I yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was real nice and beautiful. Okay. Everything was everything was beautiful. Okay. I was drunk by ten thirty. What time <laughs> the wedding started? Six o'clock. Oh, okay. Okay. By 1030, I was cross-eyed. I didn't hardly see, but I made it home. And Saturday, <laughs> I recovered from Friday. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, then went, <laughs> and then went to a graduation party where I also drunk and got drunk and high again. Oh, my and, God. <laughs> and then Sunday, mm-hmm. I was trying to recover from Saturday. Mhm. And then I end up running to a barbecue <laughs> for Memorial Day. And you got drunk and high again. So I haven't. It took me to Wednesday. What was yesterday? <laughs> yeah. <I'm finished>. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was just yesterday. And I got back together. But everything good. Oh my god! Oh my god! I mean. It sounds like you had a lot of fun. That's oh, for yeah, sure. Um, sounds like sounds like you you, you might have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> you you might need to go see a couple of AA classes or something. <laughs> nah, I'm good. I, I don't usually do that that often, but mm. special occasions and yeah. I got it. Yeah. I got it. Um, sounds like you had a lot, a lot of fun. Um, I did see, you know, your pictures on Facebook of the wedding and everything. Um, everybody looks very good. I saw Pearl. Oh yeah, I haven't seen my boy Big Pearl in a minute. He texts me. <laughs> he always seen to text me out the blue. Um, he texts me a picture um, as well, so it was good to uh, see him. You, ha- what are you doing in the background? No, I ain't going on. Mm-hmm. Okay, <laughs> um, my weekend, my weekend. This was what uh, Memorial Day weekend. Um, I didn't do much last year. I was, I went to Florida last Memorial Day. Um, you know with couple of people that I used to work with um this year um I didn't do anything for Memorial Day weekend um I know I you know I was with my grandma um part of the time so just chilling out with her and you know doing 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 what we do um I worked as well so I didn't really get a chance to just really kick it it seems like I don't know. It's probably different in Birmingham where you are because, you know, y'all, you be barbecuing and, you know, right. get-togethers and stuff like that all the time. But here it's like nobody, 
I don't never hear really hear about people barbecuing. <laughs> I'm like, you I don't get, be out in the streets enough. <laughs> you gotta get your own grill. <sighs> I had There's a gr- I had a grill. I never used it, and I gave it away to uh, I gave it away to to head. Head has my grill. <laughs> I gave him that grill a long time, some years ago. And I forgot about Monday. My wife ended up making me. I had a grill at the house Monday. <laughs> oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, so that was my Memorial Day. I hope everybody else out there who's listening um, had a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Um, I'm glad that you guys you know, if you did go out of town or go to barbecues and stuff like that, I'm glad that you, you know, made it back home safely. Um, you know, it's 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 hot outside and it just be a lot of a lot of stuff going on. Before we do get into and I said I didn't really want to talk about, you know, any deaths or shootings, but I definitely want to send um, you know, say rest in peace and send um send some thoughts and prayers out to the family. Um there was another shooting in Tulsa <coughs> in Tulsa. Um, and they just basically, um, actually today they released a photo of the, um, gentleman who actually went into the medical center in Tulsa. Um, it was an African American guy. Um, basically what they said was, um, the guy basically went to the medical center. He had surgery on his back recently. And he went, he went to the medical center to kill, to kill the actual doctor, surgeon who, you know, operated on his back because he had been calling up to the hospital and I guess calling the doctor's office numerous times because of, you know, pain that he was suffering um, from his recent surgery. And he said he kept getting the run, you know, people say he kept getting the run around, things like that. Um, And because of the, you know, extreme pain that he was feeling in his back, that was his motive because he was, you know, he decided to go up to the hospital and go to that surgeon and kill that surgeon. Um, The reason why, okay, the surgeon was found dead um, in the uh, medical center as well as I believe it was three other individuals that was dead, and the three other individuals were people who was working on, you know, that floor in the hospital um, that was basically trying to, get in the way or block, you know, block the gunman from reaching the surgeon. Um, They, they happen to, you know, get killed as well. Um, So yeah, rest in peace to those people, man. People just, I don't know. So what's the moral of that story? (laughs) I mean, it ain't no moral to the story. (laughs) It ain't no moral to the story. I mean, it is, it, it isn't a hate crime situation. It's not a, you know, I don't know if they would consider a terroristic type of situation. Um, And, you know, because the man back was hurting, of course, that's not a legitimate reason to go kill four people at all. Um, So, yeah, it just sounds like, I don't know. I don't even want to call this situation a mental health type of issue as well. I guess, you know, maybe a portion of it could be, due to some type of mental health issues, but it just seems like the man, he knew what he wanted. They say he wrote a letter about it, you know, letting them know, Hey, this is why I'm coming up here. I'm coming to kill the surgeon. He had a handgun as well as I believe an assault rifle or some type of rifle as well. He used both of them and, um, yeah, he killed, he killed these people because his back was hurt. And I'm looking like, if you see the picture of the guy, the mug shot, oh, he got he has the crazy eyes. I mean, they're up, they booked and everything. So I don't know if he was already on some, he could have been, you know, possibly on some, some type of medication already, but I'm not 100% sure of that. Um, but it was senseless nonetheless, you know, it's definitely was a senseless situation. Hello. I'm here. I'm here. I ain't went nowhere. So you be trying to do he do so much, y'all, while hey, we listen, on the phone. Me you, I mean on the podcast. I would tell the podcast. Listen, world. 
my air condition went out in my building. It's 85 degrees here. And the air conditioning <laughs> man so having to come while I'm doing this. And I am not going to tell him, wait till I get Come back later. No. <laughs> I'm going to mute this phone and I'm going to talk to this man. If I get my AC. <laughs> well, you need to give me a heads up. If you need to mute the phone, tell me you're about to mute the phone. Because <laughs> oh, I just be talking and I'm thinking you're listening. <laughs> No, I'm listening. I ain't listening man. Oh my God. Yeah. My clear. Yeah, I'm back now though. He gone. Now he was quick. Oh my God. Yeah, you definitely need some AC in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 84 degrees now. I can't do one. I'm trying to sit in the car and get some air conditioning. Oh my God, you guys. Oh my God. But I'll be glad. You know, one one of these days we will both be in the same area at the same time recording the podcast. <laughs> but for now, this is what you guys have to deal with, you know. So, you know, don't blame us. Just blame blame, you, gotta, you know. You gotta fake it till we make it. Basically. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> um, so rest in peace to those families. Um, so keeping you know trying to get back to our point of this podcast um keeping it on a lighter note um you you i know you've been following or you know heard about the situation with um missy monique and dl hughley the comedians oh yeah oh yeah back and forth cat fight who want to close the show who want to close the show the comedy show. Um, yes. Yeah, so, you know, in case, you know, people been kind of living under a rock. Um, and, you know, D.L. Hughley, um, Monique, um, they are two um, well-established uh, comedians. Comedians. Um, they've been going back and forth. You know, it's, it's just crazy. In the midst of these mass shootings and, you know, all this other stuff that be going on. We have to talk, you know, they, here they go, two very extremely grown individuals going back and forth on social media. They posting, you know, pictures of their contracts that they had with the promoter. But um, from what I understand, and you could just kind of, you know, fill me in, um, from what I understand, um, both Monique and um, <clears throat> D.L. Hughley, now before before we get into that part, um, uh, Monique, uh, was, like I said, she was a established comedian and everything recognized. She is re- she's, she is a, an established comedian and actress. Um, she also was recognized, you know, by the recording, Acad- I mean, I recorded acting Academy as well out in Hollywood, uh, for her role in precious after the whole precious situation happened. Um, Apparently, Monique was quote unquote blackballed. Um, she would go online and she would basically just talk about and, and, and complain about how she's been treated. Um, she felt as though Tyler Perry, Lee Daniels, Oprah Winfrey were all kind of behind um, the reason why she was blackballed and not really getting any work. Um, Lee Daniels, when he was making the film, directing the film Precious. <coughs> Precious, um, after the film, it's kind of standard practice for actors um, who, you know, play the part, especially the leading characters of a movie, to basically go on these marketing press runs to help promote the film, you know, when it before it goes out, comes out right. into you know, in theaters. Uh, Monique basically was refused. She was doing some press runs for Precious at the time, um, but then there were others. I believe there may have been some, you know, press trips um, that she needed to to go go overseas and some other places Lee Daniels kind of wanted her to to do, and she refused because um, she felt as though, you know, her time was being taken away from her family, and why would she basically, you know, do these additional press runs if she wasn't getting paid? Um, so basically, you know, Lee Daniels kind of put that stigma onto Monique as being someone difficult to work with. And from that point, you know, 
Tyler Perry, Oprah Winfrey, um, they all kind of shared the same sentiments. And she was, quote, unquote, blackball for the industry. So for years now, you know, Monique has been on Periscope, YouTube, with her husband. <laughs> with her daddy. Hu- <laughs> with her daddy. husband, a.k.a. Daddy, who's also <laughs> her manager as well. And they, you know, they would be on the on the internet just giving their opinions about life their relationships um a few times you know she did speak out against being blackball and all this type of stuff and she always felt like you know with her being a black woman and all that type of stuff you know she felt as they she shouldn't be quote unquote canceled that's the new terminology we kind of used uh, today um but recently here recently here monique has been kind of getting some support, you know, some support. She went on, um, uh, if you ever heard of T.S. Madison, T.S. Madison has like this variety type of uh, talk show on Fox Soul um, where <clears throat> basically she interviewed Lee Daniels. The subject of Monique came up. Lee Daniels basically, you know, wanted to kind of apologize and, you know, kiss and make up with Monique. Uh, Monique also was on Fox Soul on a separate episode uh, where T.S. Madison, you know, and her talked about um, her, you know, just her dealings with these individuals. And everybody at this point with Lee Daniels and Monique kind of came together in Kumbaya. So she kind of been looking up. 50 Cent shouted her out, talking about, you know, he wanted to use her in some of his um, television or movie pro- uh, projects. Um, he also actually I gave her an acting role on one of his projects. I don't know what series that was for, um, but everything has been looking up on Monique. She's been back on the road doing comedy shows, and then all of a sudden the situation with D.L. Hughley arise, and these fools over here, you know, they are basically have been going back and forth arguing about who was basically contractually assigned to be the headliner of the co- of, of the comedy show. Um, now, what you saying, <laughs> uh, what you mm-hmm. just said, mm-hmm. to me, <clears throat> I'm thinking off the top, she ain't the headliner, you know? After all that stuff you just said, after she didn't got blackballed and she's working her way back into the industry, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I know she ain't the headliner just by what you just said. Why? Because she haven't been in, in any films? No, because she ain't, yeah, she really just trying to work her way back. So if you working your way back, you're not finna be the headliner. And the way Ricky Smiley, he said something about the whole thing. He mm-hmm. say they all are headliners. You know what I'm saying? Every time you do a show, each one of those persons can be a headliner. You know what I'm saying? It's just the order you go in that night, you know? Right. Okay. Because on the flyer, it had both of their pictures on the. I'm talking about the same size, mm-hmm. right next to each other. No, it depends on what flyer you I don't know what flyer you saw. I saw I saw one of the, you know, the flyers to promote the event. And D.L. Hughley name, his name was in much bigger letters than Monique. His picture was, his face was more prominent on the flyer than Monique as well. She was kind of, her face was kind of sitting off to the side of his, but his face was definitely more prominent than Monique. So what that tell you then? That's just, that's just, that ain't up even more. She wasn't there. You just made my point. (laughs) Right. But do you, I mean, I I guess, but what my thing is with, with the Monique, with Monique, she blasted D.L. Hughley. So she basically took her time on stage, you guys. And you can go online and you can check out her whole little comedy bit. But instead of her telling jokes, her whole little bit during that comedy segment um, was bashing D.L. I mean, she yeah. she went off on D.L. It was funny, though. The dog, the, everybody got it. <laughs> everybody got it. It was a mess, man. She went off on him, uh, right? But like I said, once they started going on the Internet and each of them showing their contracts, D.L. showed a copy of his, of his contract that he had with which stated he was the headliner. Um, he also showed something else with, you know, like a little show outline 
Yeah. Where he was the one that goes on last, which is the last person on a comedy show is considered the headliner of the show because they close out the show and they usually have more minutes up, you know, on stage than the people previous to them. Um, it showed he was the last one. Um, Monique showed her documentation, you know, her contract from her company. Um, and looking at, all of this documentation that they put out there, which was too much, you know, the public really didn't need to see all of that, but I guess each of them wanted to kind of prove their point. Um, I'm going to blame it on the promoter. I, what I feel like, I feel you like, the, both of them. <laughs> I don't even really blame them. I feel like the promoter, I feel like the promoter was trying to be slick. I think that the promoter of course wanted to, you know, have DL and Monique, who was the major stars, you know, on that lineup. He wanted both of them to be on the show. And I think that probably one of the ways that he was, you know, he or she was able to, you know, get Monique to sign up for it, sign on the dotted line was to make it seem like she was going to be the headliner. And so they basically fed her, you know, they finessed her in a way. Mr. both of them. I mean, yeah, yeah. I guess you can. Yeah, you can say that exactly. That's what. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Like they never said nothing about the promoter. He never had them. I ain't seen none. None of his statements. Right. Yeah. I haven't seen a statement come out from the promoter. Um. But yeah, he. I believe. I believe Monique definitely. Although she, like I said, she has the star power. She has the longevity in the game to be a headliner. But I think in this case, um, I think that this was going to be kind of one of her major kind of comeback shows. Um, they wanted her on the same show as DL, but DL, you know, DL hasn't been quote unquote blackballed. You know, he's been doing comedy and packing out shows on his own for years. So that's what happened. Monique, you got finesse, baby. <laughs> Monique can't be wrong. She and can't do no wrong. <laughs> right. And she can't be outdone. Right. She can't do no wrong. Let her tell it. She's going to blame it on the man versus the woman. Mm -hmm. She a woman and she's not going to let you just do her no any kind of way. That's the problem everybody got with her. Right. Yeah. 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 And, you know, half of that, I think, it just be, it be daddy. It be daddy. <laughs> Her manager in her ear talking all that stuff. So she's the star. So she just basically just, you know, regurgitate that stuff out of her mouth based on what daddy. But listen, I'm going to tell her daddy. daddy something. When them checks stop coming in, damn with daddy. And both of y'all need to keep your mouth shut. Exactly. <laughs> the checks start coming back in. And she's just all about making money. And you running your mouth talking all that shit and ain't no money coming in this motherfucker. I don't give a fuck with your daddy, mama, or whoever. <laughs> you need to shut the fuck and up. She ain't, and apparently she ain't learned her lesson yet. <laughs> no, because it's going to be She's still talking right. She's still talking shit. You finna get blackballed all over again, sister. What do you know? From the about? comedy world. It ain't right. You blackballed by Hollywood. Now you about to be blackballed by the comedy world. <laughs> Yeah, you ain't even do a company show then. Oh my oh, gosh. Cool. He on that bitch. He went off on her so bad. So <laughs> you ain't talking about she ain't never been funny. The only thing she did is talk about fat jokes and little dick jokes. And other than that, when none of that shit funny. Who that's said that Corey he, Holcomb? Yeah. Oh god. He said that's he said that's the reason why she had to go in on DL for her whole time on that show because she ain't had no material. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, Monique has been funny to me. Just I'm just thinking back, you know, thinking back to her her, her old like you know stand up stuff. She was funny, but like, yeah, after a while though, yeah, the fat jokes and like I said, them jokes about you know penises and stuff like that did get old. Um, I've never had her kind of like in my top five, you know. Top five, top ten list of favorite comedians. Um, that might be part of her problem too. What she thinks she is, what she ain't. <laughs> she yeah. thinks she's something, but she really ain't. She thinks she more than what she is. Yeah, 
Yeah. She got them number one if you ask her. Right. Yeah, yeah, but I, you know, I don't want to take anything from her. She's been on, you know, she's held down uh, television sitcoms. You know what I'm saying? She, she was on her way to, you know, definitely being solidified in Hollywood from, you know, a motion picture standpoint. Um, so she, you know, I give her credit what credit's due. She, she, she earned her flowers. But I think, like I said, ever since she had that, because I even think when she had her own show on BET, remember that little Arsenio Hall type talk show she had that came on yeah. at night, uh, the Monique show. It was filmed here in Atlanta. You know, she was doing pretty good. She had, I forgot how many seasons that show ran, but after a while, you know, it was rumblings here in Atlanta um, where, you know, her husband was kind of fucking up everything behind the scenes, you know? So he may have been, you know, integral in her losing that, that BET show as well. So, you know, daddy child. Well, it's the manager, right? He just... Yeah, fucking up all the negotiations, and she trying to take up him fucking on. That might be the problem. You know what I'm saying? I think it's the problem. I th- really think it's the problem. Is that dude? Daddy then got them fucked up everything. Now she trying to clean it up and don't know how to do it. Right, right. He always, you know, in some shit. But I mean, I get it. You want as a as a black woman in you know. And shit, I was gonna say in certain industries, but shit, it seemed like it happens in all industries. When you're a woman, you, you're getting paid less than the male figure. Period. That's just what it is. Um, but then when you're a black woman, on top of that, you know, you definitely have some inequalities there uh, when it comes to treatment and um, you know how much money you make. You know, in these industries, um, I can understand him wanted to help her. You know, be be valued and, and, and have her standards and demand certain dollar amounts, you know, to sign on to these projects and everything. But I just think that they're up, the approach that they're using to do that just rubs people the wrong way. Right. Mm-hmm. But enough, enough of these two fools. Um, quickly <laughs> here, let's talk about it. So young, I mean, young thug, um, he had his court hearing today. I believe yeah, last week we did kind of mention um, Ghana. He was denied bond. Um, and Young Thug on today, um, the judge denied bond for him again. Um, it does look like he was getting, however, um, some people in the industry to come out and kind of support him. Um, and let me just play this clip real quick of Kevin Lyles. Kevin Lyles, he is the CEO of 300 ENT. He's a longtime uh, music industry vet. Um, he managed a lot of people um, within his career. Um, but let's let's listen real quick. So you're going to have to just be quiet on your end, um, G. Yeah. industry dealing with the lyrics and why are they being promoted and why are people wanting it? To be honest, you, you, um, I don't know how old you are, but you know, you know, older than you. <laughs> so, uh, I've been fighting this battle for over four years. Um, it's not, it's not new. And it's funny how we're the number one music in the world now and want to bring this back up. Now, we don't argue about any other words, in, uh, movies or other genres of music that talk about I ran them over in my truck or I, 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 got, got, had, I got drunk and I went and shot them. We don't, we don't bring those things to court. But quote unquote, our music, we've been on trial. Can you explain? So that was, um, and I'm hoping that everybody, I turned the mic as far up as I could, but uh, hopefully you guys did um, hear that little um, snippet of Kevin Lyles, the CEO of 300 ENT. Um, he was in court just speaking on the behalf of, um, <clears throat> of Young Thug. However, the judge, again, denied his bond. Um, I am glad that um, these music executives um, are 
helping to kind of support um, and, you know, these attor- defense attorneys as well, because, you know, it is unfortunate that that the courtrooms are allowing the use of these rap lyrics. Um, one attorney for, I believe it might've been even yet Yak Gotti's attorney who just, who they just claim, um, claim today also, um, that he was the one, um, and it, they say it, it is stated in his paperwork. I haven't had a chance to read his paperwork, but they are basically trying to, um, kind of blame him as being the one out of the YSL crew, um, who, um, kind of, you know, ratted the fellas out and everything. Um, hopefully I will have more updates about that by next week. But back on the the music executives, I'm glad that the attorneys and the mu- music executives are step kind of stepping up and, you know, help helping the justice system and the judges understand that this is a way of life that have hip-hop music and the contents of their music um, has been able to, you know, help – Thousands of families, um, you know, kind of get out of their economic predicament. But at the same time, this music industry, especially here in Atlanta, how deep it is, root, how deep rooted it is on the hip hop side of things. It has definitely been a major benefit to at, to the city of Atlanta, to the state of Georgia when it comes to fr- um, comes to an economic standpoint. It's so many entertainers now because of the hip hop music in Atlanta. Um, just having that spotlight and, and being able to, you know, help the city and everything that helped allow the state of um, Georgia and the city of Atlanta b- help bring in the Hollywood production crews. Now, Atlanta and the surrounding cities have major Hollywood, you know, production crews. So all of that money um, that has been simulated by entertainment itself here in Atlanta should account for something. So for, you know, the justice system now and the RICO Act to try to use these lyrics against these fellas, not only is it going to, you know, be a detriment to these artists as well who get, you know, get arrested and indicted on these charges, but now it's going to have a major, major negative impact on these, you know, cities and these states that benefit from that music. So what you think? I think once these fellas get all this money from rapping or, you know, what you call it, the hip hop, you can't go stand in the middle of the projects where you came from and think that you still going to, it's not going to work, man. I'm just telling you, y'all. You're not going to be able to take the money you made off rap, then go stand in the middle of the project with all these different people still living the same life that you was living before you became a rapper. It's not going to work. That's how they got themselves in this situation. Just because you got all the money now, they just put you as the leader. It's going to prove these 4K. It's going to put you as the leader. Mm-hmm. You already saying you want everybody, all your friends to eat. You say you want um get a hundred people. I on one of them interviews, you say you want to get a hundred of his friends that work for him. And when he get ready to tie, you want to get everybody one one percent so everybody can have the same amount. You know what I'm mean? saying? Right. That's not gonna work, man. Yeah. And, and, and you don't you and they gonna make the example out of you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm mean? saying? Yeah. Cause they can look at all these YouTube videos I've been watching. You standing in the middle of the project with all these people, mm-hmm. and, you, and you running things. And right. If you ain't, it look like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I so. mean, you got a, you definitely made you know a valid a valid point there. Um, you know, it it, it kind of is it works hand in hand. Um, like you said, on one side, you know, on one side, the justice system and the music industry. You know, like I said, they need to kind of come together and kind of figure out something. I don't think it's fair to you to use, you know, rap lyrics against these artists. Um, it's a free, it's an expression. It's a form of expression. Um, I believe I also saw, um, uh, what's his name, Russell Simmons. Um, also spoke out, um, spoke out, <coughs> um, regarding, um, you know, Young Thug situation and Gunna situation. Um, he he also brought up a good point where, you know, if you look at 
Um, if you look at just back in the day, he said if this RICO Act is going to begin to or, you know, continues to utilize these, you know, um, expressions, um, this material, this music and the lyrics um, against these people, the same thing should have been done uh, when they was utilizing the RICO, you know, RICO Act um, against mob um, when it comes to like uh, mob organizations crime affiliate organizations um, and the individuals from Hollywood who used to be, you know, entangled yeah. in all of that mob stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Like Sammy Davis Jr., uh, you know, the whole little Rat Pack crew. Um, and he was just, come, you know, saying stuff like that, which I agree wholeheartedly. Like, don't all of a sudden, you know, nowadays, all of a sudden just start using this against, you know, these hip-hop mm -hmm. artists. Yeah. And, you know, the hip-hop artists are mostly of African-American, you know, culture. So it's kind of like, okay, now they done found out another way to kind of, you know, oppress the black community um, and send our, you know, send our young men and women to prison over some some shit I see, a rap lyric I said, you know, 10 years ago in a rap, which is hey. crazy. Hey, when you want to be a boss of uh, organization, something like that, that's what happens. You know what I'm saying? eventually yeah but and they just calling the shots yeah you're right but it's it, they shouldn't i don't think they a, a record label mind you i'm not i'm not excusing anything any criminal activity that ysl and that whole label crew quote unquote crew have done i, I i'm not doing that i'm just saying when it comes to like they're, they're separate things. It's a music label, you know, and it should be treated yeah, as it should be treated as a music label. But don't take the art that has been created under this music label and use now use it, uh, you know, use it against me to try to help justify justify these assumed criminal activities. Like it's almost like you're judging judge. I'm it's. In, isn't it innocent until proven guilty? You're kind of prejudging me based on things that I've said in my music. They they basically saying that you're using your record label as a front to to um, fund your organization, which you can say he doing that because he's telling you he doing that in so many words. Yeah. Well, I just know not to call you as one of my defense witnesses <laughs> ever in life. No, I'm just saying. Ever it's in the life. Same way with Rollo. <laughs> the boy Rollo. They got him the same way. He told on himself. They ain't have to call no witnesses. You know what I'm saying? What you got to call a witness when you documenting everything? But I mean, yeah, it is the same thing as the Rollo situation. However, Rollo was probably one of the first, I ain't going to say one of the first cases, but I'll say, you know, one that kind of us may have heard about where this Rico, you know, Rico indictment included lyrics, you know, lyrics from the music, right? He was kind of one of the first ones. Then it was like a lot of the New York rappers, um, Casanova, you know, he got, he's still in prison now. Um, and it start kind of, you know, increasing after that Rollo situation. They, it, it seems like they kind of found this, not loophole, but prosecutors, you know, found a way. Hey, we can start really getting to, you know, getting to these hip hop artists who be bragging and showing their money and talking about killing and, you know, on the videos with guns. Let's start utilizing these lyrics, you know, against them um, in court. So he was kind of like the first one, you know, one of the first ones that got caught up in that. Okay, now you tell me this. Do you think that those guys, Young Thug and Gunner, kind of had made it to the point where they thought they might have been untouchable? Mm, I don't think they, they thought they was... Forgot. They, they, they could have forgot, <laughs> and they could it could have slipped their mind. They could have been right, you know, riding you know on riding on so many uh, you know, jets going from country <laughs> to country, and said, Shh, "We way. got this." Shit. Yeah, they probably like, we got this under control, man. Oh yeah, you forgot. 
<laughs> and they could have forgot. Yeah, they started slipping. They kind of started yeah, slipping. That's what I think. That's what. The, that's what. That's what I think happened. Yeah. They, they didn't. They let it got to their head. They did. They doing so much. Got all this money. Putting their people on. Everything going how it's supposed to go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They didn't beat all the cases that mm -hmm. that, that did get. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You're right, but it and with that, most times all it takes is one person. Oh yeah, somebody got one to person put that bug, <laughs> bug in law enforcement ear. Oh, I got something for you. <laughs> I got something for you. I got my own charges and cases because that what they said. Speaking of speaking back on Yak Gotti, Yak Gotti is also a um, rapper as well. Um, he was kind of fairly new to the scene, um, but <clears throat> he was, um, you know, very supportive and down with the YSL um, music label. And so basically today, um, they said that he had, a, he had a case two years ago, I believe. Um, let me read it because I had it right here in front of me, and we're going to get out of here. We're going to be we gonna be on here too long. But anyway, um on Academic's page, he posted a post. Uh, he was like, a lot of talk. Um, it was basically a comment made by someone on Twitter. So basically said, a lot of talk about how Yak Gotti snitched. So they're saying that he was the one um, that snitched on um, Ghana and um, Thug. It's not quite that simple. He pled guilty when um, he and YSL had another artist named Duke were caught with rifles um, a few years ago um, as they were on the way to a retaliation hit after a fight at the famous Magic City Strip Club. If pled guilty is snitching, that's a high standard. So I guess that kind of helps get Gotti's claim because yet Gotti himself also... Um, he posted something to um, basically denying the rumors that he cooperated um, to help build the, ca the RICO case against YSL. He posted on his story, he said, 2015, um, my brother never did a day in jail because I claimed my shit. So I guess that, you know, Duke and him found what the rifles happened in 2015. That's the dude he said, I did. Man. Who, Duke? The Duke, yeah. I believe so. Um, he said, Gotti says, I did four years fed with no tears. He says, so stop the cap. So. So he already did? did time or did something else? This he already, case. yeah, he, he already did some time for that 2015 situation with being caught with the rifles. I just think they're just trying to throw it on somebody, man. Cause if he would have told in, she the feds, the feds don't play. Yeah, I know. I've been involved with them motherfuckers before. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. If he would have told in something, it, it, they'll know it. Cause he would have had they he gonna have to be the one to testify. She the feds ain't gonna let you off just by telling. If you need to go in the courtroom, you go on in there too. <laughs> she that's the only way you gonna get your part of the deal. Right. And for it seems like this man not already been in prison and did this time. So what's the use of telling that? Yeah. Yeah. You're right about that. You're right about that. And it's just like with Gunner as well. I think some years ago, um, when Gunner was much younger, he, he did one of those T I situations where um he had to do like a stops a crime stoppers commercial as mm -hmm. part of something um and and you know every so many years you, you know the internet would kind of bring it up you know what i'm saying trying to call gonna a snitch and he, you know of course it that wasn't what it was you know um so yeah it's just crazy how all this stuff is going on but i'm going to continue to pray for the ysl crew um you need to pray for the harris family too them some clowns who? we ain't got time to talk about them this week Oh Lord, child! <laughs> oh, I That's forgot cold, about man. them. <laughs> Ti and his son at the Waffle House. Oh, you heard what Ti said about yeah, the Waffle? Like he a real clown. He ain't said nothing about his son. Talking about he what all he gonna do and 
Ooh, right. Ooh, he done ooh. called a he done called a <laughs> the the man that that cooking the food a sec we said a short order cook and called him the less fortunate. Man, they yeah, if you man. go on Instagram, <laughs> they lit his ass up in the comments. Them people lit his ass up. Yeah, they gonna light all them up for that stupid ass shit. T like talking about live your life and they oh, that shit was so dumb what he said. You supposed to get man, your son eighteen, nineteen years old talking about what he gonna do if they come all that shit, man. Right. All that shit unnecessary. What if them folks really bad? Call his bluff. He ain't got nothing in the car. Exactly. He ain't even doing that yeah, his son, his son could have <laughs> got shot right there at the Waffle House by the work. That's workers. what I'm saying. Doing all that goddamn, you don't know who you talking to. Right. You know what I'm saying? You just popping because mm-hmm. of who your folks is. You know what I'm saying? Because you ain't popping by who you is because you ain't nobody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That man, that man working in the Waffle House could have some nephews or cousins or brothers and sisters who might be down with, you know. No, he could be down. I mean, he could be down too, but I'm just saying, if he was an older man, I'm just saying, like, he could have some family members that's, that's down, you know, they down about it. So, yeah, he need to watch it back. You think that... Yeah, man, and you ain't no good parent if you if that's all you had to say to your child after right. a situation like that. Condoning the situation. That's so... And he yeah. sounded... T.I. T.I. be using the big words, but yet you sound, your logic is so dumb. It's it's just exactly. so fucking dumb. How can you call somebody less fortunate just because they back there cooking eggs and waffles and shit? You never know. It be people. It be people that live an extremely simple lifestyle. Got a regular old nine to five. Probably make ten dollars ten dollars an hour, but yet be millionaires. And you would never ever know because they just don't live a life, you know, flashy and stuff like that. You know. So he yeah, just, he like sounds, he's so ignorant, man. Like, you you yeah, so yeah. smart, you ignorant and dumb. <laughs> and you making your kids dumb, too. Right. Now, that's all you got to say. Now, you, now you supposed, did you ever say, now you know you was wrong now, right? Right, you know? he ain't never say that. <laughs> no, not, not now time. But he gonna call them other folks less fortunate and mm-hmm. your life better than theirs. And, man, I don't know that bullshit, man. Right? Yeah. You a clown. I know one thing. Well, this probably be real mean, but if I was working at the Waffle House, every time I saw T.I. or his son in a Waffle House, I I put the uh what they call it a APB out. <laughs> no, we close. Shoot, I might start dropping his waffles on the floor or something, <laughs> or his <laughs> put dropping his food on the floor and then serving to him. <laughs> no, yeah, you really wrong. <laughs> Just evil, but I mean, you never know, man. Shoot, yeah, Ti was very ignorant about that. Ti ain't got long. That's the only thing I can tell you about that fool. He ain't got long for he talk his talk his way out of position too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not. It almost yeah, it almost happened with them little sexual little allegations with him and his wife, and he they shit they got off that internet real quick. They was gone for a minute. All you heard was crickets on the internet. But now he back posting and stuff, so child, it's just a whole lot of mess. But anyway, so let's get out of here. I'm okay there. <laughs> it's about okay then. <laughs> All right, you guys. It's been a week. This is a 50 minute episode. Um, hope you guys enjoy it. As always, don't forget to um, you know, subscribe and follow us on all streaming. Uh, podcast platforms um also social media as well at straightforward um msb on social media Um, we're on youtube for those who don't have the podcast apps you can go to our youtube page at straightforward with msb and listen to the audios as well um you want to say anything before we go i love all y'all i do i really do okay Y'all pray for him, okay? Make sure he, you know, stay off the drink and the smoke. But anyway, until next week, (laughs) y'all.